Hello everyone, my name is Shazia Khan and today's session we'll be doing is uh, business law for managers um, and we'll be doing learning outcome three today which is to understand key business related laws. Now before I go into learning outcome three um, I just want to give you a recap of what we did in the last session which was learning outcome two. In the last session we looked at understanding legal and justice systems within um, a business context. We looked at elements of um, understanding legal and justice systems. Uh, we looked at uh, the role of uh, legal systems in business, things like uh, regulation of business practices, protection of rights, enforcement of contracts, dispute resolution, we also looked at the civil and the criminal system within the justice system in regards to businesses. We then went on to look at alternative dispute resolution, which is referred to as ADR, and the relevance to businesses. We then looked at uh, 2.3, which was types of legal business cases in justice system, things like contract, employment, intellectual property. Uh, we then went on to look at 2.4 within Learning Outcome 2, which look at the importance of compliance and legal awareness. We went into looking at risk management, reputational management, operational efficiencies and avoiding any sort of criminal liabilities. We went on to look at explaining what is meant by the term legal system. Uh, we looked at the components of the legal system, such as legislation, directives, case law, uh, treaties and their role within the legal system and why they are so important uh, and gave you some examples around that. We then went on to look at the legal system court structures within the UK and the hierarchy of the courts. So we looked at criminal courts uh, um, and then uh, things like magistrates court. So what they do their role and their appeal system we looked at the crown court the court of appeal criminal division supreme court we went on then to look at the civil courts as well disputes against individuals um between individuals and businesses organizations um, and within civil law there is a name to get any sort of legal remedy such as compensation we went on to look at county courts high courts within the civil division um the court of appeal civil division and the supreme court we then went on to look at the specialist courts. Uh, so there are specialist courts uh, within um, the court system, which deal with specialist areas and specific types of cases, things like employment law. Uh, we looked at family cases, family courts. We looked at commercial courts. We then went on to look at um, the justice system um, and uh, the framework around the institutional laws in place. Uh, we looked at key elements of the justice system in the UK. So we looked at the role of the government, uh, what their key responsibilities are, things like law creation, policy administration and resource allocation with reference to examples. We looked at the role of government agencies. So it could be the Crown Prosecution Service, the National Offender Management a service N or MS and you know what each of them do with reference to examples. Um, we then went on to look at um, the element of um, uh, the law enforcement. So here we looked at uh, the example of Metropolitan Police in London with their key responsibilities, so crime prevention, public safety, execution of court orders. We then went on to look at um, the elements of the courts within the UK system, so the hierarchy of the courts, so what each court did, how they dealt with it, and which is the highest and which was the lowest court. Um, we then went on to look at correction in the UK system. So things like we looked at prisons, which was category A prisons, category B and C and category D and what each one did and why prisoners are in there for what offences. We looked at the probation service in regards to community rehabilitation and also looked at post-prison support. Uh, we then went on to look at young, young youth offender institution and um, 
and looked at the function of correctional systems, such as uh, things like punishment, uh, rehabilitation, public safety, and gave um, you examples in regard to that. Uh, so that was the learning outcome. There will be an overlap with uh, learning outcome two and three. So we'll look at learning outcome three now. So you've got a better idea of what we need to do within learning outcome three. So learning outcome three is to understand key business related uh, laws. So we look at elements of uh, consumer law. The key, the indicative content is consumer law, contract law, um, law of tort, uh, international economic security and criminal law. Uh, key terminology, so what is consumer law? Uh, provides protection for consumers. Um, anyone in regards to any elements of, you know, um, the fact that if there's any sort of issues around the quality of the product, uh, fit for purpose, things like that, which we'll be developing more later on. We also look at contract law, so why contract laws are so important when it comes to businesses and why there's a need for them. And then the law of tort in regards to civil uh, wrongs or any acts of negligence. So um, here we'll be looking at why the legal element, uh, why business law is so important and why the legal issue around business law is important and how can that protect a business. So this video here looks at the legal basics for UK businesses and it's really, really good. So have a look at that and the link is there for you to look at in your own time and look at the elements of the legal basics for any sort of business in the UK. So next we'll be looking at understanding key business related laws, why they are so important. So any sort of business laws um, within the UK is there to protect both businesses um, and the consumers itself. A business owners, employees and consumers can feel secure and confident um, while trading and investing as the law maintains any sort of order and gives sanctions and protects individuals. Uh, you know, whether you know you are in a business which is um that operates overseas, you know, you need to be able to look at um the criminal and the civil side of it, but also Laws such as consumer law, uh, it could be starting up a business. You couldn't bear into make into account that you just look at contract law, business law, cop, uh, company law, consumer law to help you understand why these are so important with in regards to any sort of um, setting up a business. So now we're going to look at. Um, key business related laws. So firstly, we'll go into contract law and why that's so important for any sort of business. So contracts function as you know a, a record of rights, responsibilities and obligations of the parties. An effective contract in detail describes the duty of each of the party and make sure that these contracts um, are abided by and not breached. Um, the importance of contracts um, is that it's essential for any business um, and it is uh, in regards to businesses, it's very important as it's the backbone of any business relationship with other organisations. It's there to establish any sort of trust, um, mutual understanding, which is crucial uh, to a business and a strong foundation. And they protect the parties, you know, if there's any sort of misunderstanding or any sort of uh, disputes and resolution, you know, it is there to protect the party. So contract law is really important in any business um, and it's essential for conducting any business in the UK because it provides uh, a form of protection for both parties. An example uh, given is a company enters into a contract with a supplier to deliver uh, goods with a specified time frame. If the supplier fails to deliver, the company can seek legal remedies under contract law. So, you know, it's so important that it's, a, you know, because there was in that example, there's a contract between two parties and it creates a legal obligation uh, to perform that particular duty. And it's a legally enforceable contract and it requires different elements, which we'll be looking at later as well. So you'll have an idea why businesses need these in place to be able to, you know, um, 
uh, perform any sort of contract. So, you know, they lead, need a legally binding agreement between themselves and the organisation. So the next one we've got is employment law. And employment law, again, like contract law, um, is very important because it's there to protect uh, the rights of um, individuals and also, you know, it's there to protect the rights of um, workers. So in the UK, the number of areas, employment legislation, that form the basis of employees in the workplace. So, you know, it could be put, making sure that employees are protected, they're safe, any sort of working conditions, recruitment, you know, there's legislation on recruitment, um, there's legislation on the pay, um, and for any organisation and any business that is really important. Um, and it covers uh, the workers in regards to what they pay is, that they're not discriminated against. And the, the law is designed to ensure employers are all treated fairly. And we have the Equality Act, which has the nine characteristics and that people are protected within them, nine characteristics, things like race, gender, age, discrimination, you know, age discrimination, uh, sex, sexual orientation, religion, disability. So, you know, it's really important that employment law plays a big part in uh, any business um, to ensure that working conditions are fair and protected. Then we've got um, the Consumer uh, Protection Act, uh, which is refers to a piece of legislation designed to protect um, consumers from poor quality um, products or poor business practices. And in the UK, there are several pieces of legislation that form the basis of uh, consumer rights, things like Consumer Rights Act 2015, um, Consumer Protection Act 1987, Trade Description Act as well. You know, you have to, if you're selling things, you should be not misleading your advertising practices. You know, it protects individuals um, against any sort of, um, between a seller and a buyer that the product or service is described as accurate, fit for purpose and satisfactory quality, which we'll look at um, later on in more detail. So the example here is that, you know, if you buy a faulty product, you should receive a refund if the product is faulty, you know, um, and you should be able to get that refund back on the basis of that property. Um, the next one is uh, company law and businesses. So why company law is so important and why does it affect any sort of businesses? And it's the company law is the main one in regards to any sort of formation, operation of any business. So any business within fall. And the example is the Companies Act. So it sets out the, prime, uh, the principle, um, the law relating to any company, how it should, uh, uh, you know, it defines your legal responsibility um, and it defines what, you know, aspects. The Act covers a huge amount of aspects of law applicable to any sort of company. It gives in regards to shareholders' duties, directors' duties, and it provides a framework for any businesses to operate uh, with, uh, with taking into account and outlining all the um, duties you have within the Company Act 2006, because that is the act that you must follow when it comes to any business setting up um, and why, you know, um, what the relationship is and why it's so important um, to follow and comply with um, any sort of elements of the Companies Act. The next one we've got is health and safety laws, which are really important in regards to any business. Uh, you know, the fact that, you know, health and safety is an element of, you know, uh, protection within, uh, you know, you have to ensure that within the workplace there's health and safety uh, policies in place. You know, you need to make sure that people are protected to prevent any sort of accidents or any sort of ill health um, and it protects employees and employers and put the public coming in to make sure the working environment the working is is safe you know and the health and safety at work tax 74 requires employees to implement measures of risk um, and uh, health and safety within the workplace 
you know, and non-compliance with this could be a criminal offence and it could turn to imprisonment as well. So you should make sure that you, it is complied with. And the next one is intellectual property. And intellectual property refers to intangible assets or creations owned or created by an individual. Uh, protecting in intellectual property is important to ensure that work is not stolen or copied and the right people are awarded for their work. So, you know, it, it's there for intellectual, shows that business ideas are protected, you know, inventions are protected, they are copyright painted and trademarked, you know, and they need to make sure that these have an impact on, you know, the company and make sure that their ideas have not been uh, taken away or, um, you know, trade secrets shared. Uh, example, uh, a company may register a trademark to protect its brand logo and things like, you know, the ingredients and things like that. And a good example for that would be Coca-Cola. Then we've got um, competition law and why competition law is so important in regards to any sort of businesses. So competition law is, uh, policy, is competition policies about rules to make businesses and company compete fairly. So it prevents any sort of monopolies and it encourages enterprise efficiency and creates a wide choice for consumers, helps reduce prices and improve the quality as well. So there's no price fixing or abuse of market power um, and anti-competitive mergers. It promotes competition uh, and protects consumers. And the example is the Competition Act 1998, which prohibit, prohibits any sort of agreement um, that restrict competition, such as price fixing or abuse of dominant market position. Um, then all, all businesses must comply with competition law and there can be serious consequences for businesses and individuals, um, including directors for non-compliance. Uh, so it's really important that they comply with that. The next one is environmental law and why that is so important within businesses. So environmental law is there to set out obligations for businesses to protect the environment, regulate any sort of pollution and ensure that they are complying with the law. Um, it ensures that environmentally responsible for Im uh, impact on ecosystem uh, and it's the protection of um the example was the Environmental Protection Act uh, 2019, which uh, penalties are uh, you know, given to businesses that don't take in, uh, into account any sort of protection for clean air, water quality, waste, you know, and you know, takes account of these when uh, setting up their businesses. So it, this table is a summary of um, table of key business related laws. So we looked at contract law, employment law, consumer protection law, comp company law, health and safety law, intellectual property law, and um, competition law. And we also looked at environmental law in regards to how important they are within a business and uh, the definition importance and gave examples for that. So in conclusion, understanding key business related law is crucial for businesses to operate legally, responsibly and effectively. These laws not only provide protection for businesses and individuals, but also help maintain a fair and competitive market, promote innovation and ensure uh, that ethical practices are followed in the workplace and beyond. Compliance with these laws is fundamental to avoid legal risks and ensuring long-term success. So now we're going to look at 3.1, describe key features of consumer law in the UK. So we're going to be looking at the importance of consumer law within the UK and why it's so important in regards to elements of uh, the issues around it. So consumer law is there to protect individuals and consumers' rights and businesses, make sure they operate fairly and create a, a good business environment to make sure uh, products are safe, of good quality and fit for purpose. So false advertising, that's really important when it comes to consumer law. You need to make sure that false advertising refers to the practice of misleading consumers. So don't, you know, um, advertise your products falsely. Don't mislead people. 
uh, because you have to, they would for it's enforced by the Consumer Protection from Unfair Trading Regulations 2008. Uh, an example is a company falsely advertising that its products cure something uh, and someone, and uh, there's no elements of that within the product. So falsely advertising that could be uh, an offence in itself. Health and safety. So making sure that the products are uh, do not pose any risks and they are um, ensure that all products are safe and meet the standards. And also, um, if they do not meet the standards, you are breaching the Consumer Protection Act 1987 and it imposes liability on businesses um, to make sure that their products do not cause any harm. Um, an example is a toy manufacturer must ensure all toys meet specific standards such as absence of small parts in regards to, you know, children choking on these small parts or, you know, um, the fact that they can fall off or they easily can fall off. You need to make sure they are uh, at a specific standard. The next one is making sure that they fit for purpose. So when we look at fit for purpose, that's the element of, you know, making sure that the what the product is fit for purpose, meaning that it should perform as it's advertised. You know, um, if a consumer purchases a washing machine and it fails to wash clothes properly, it's not fit for purpose and they can seek remedy. So you need to make sure that the products you advertise are fit for purpose. Then we've got the next one, which is to make sure that the products are of satisfactory quality. So here, this means that goods should meet any standard any reasonable person would expect uh, and taking into account the description of the goods, the price paid and how they were made. So it's it's crucial that, you know, products are of satisfactory quality um, and you need to make sure that, you know, um, there's a criteria, you know, that there's any sort of freedom from defects, any appearance, finish, durability. Uh, the definition does not co cover all matters brought to the buyer's attention. Because, you know, they need to make sure they're examining the product to make sure that it's of satisfactory quality and there's a good standard. An example in that was if a consumer buys a new smartphone and it stops working after a few days, uh, you know, you need to make sure that it is um, elements of that are uh, met. So the legal quality, um, satisfactory quality, needs to make sure that the goods are of satisfactory quality and make sure that they are fit for purpose as well. Um, so like we mentioned, the smartphone, that it would stop working. So that's the quality and that's the defect where the consumer can return that form then. So summary of key features of consumer law, we looked at false advertising. Uh, the definition of that, the legal requirement, consumer protection, and an example, we looked at health and safety, and we looked at um, the definition, legal requirement, um, and the consumer protection, and gave an example there as well. We looked at fit purpose, fit for purpose and satisfactory quality with reference to examples, and why there's a need in consumer law to have elements of this in place. So consumer law in the UK is designed to ensure that businesses operate fairly and the consumers are protected from deceptive practices, unfair products and poor quality goods. Laws such as consumer protection um, and the consumer protection for unfair trading um, provides a legal framework that protects by ensuring that products are safe to use, fit for purpose or satisfactory quality. Goods should be described um, as accurately as they can. They should not be misleaded. They should also, consumers must be given the right to return, replace, or have a repair for any faulty goods. And the businesses must ensure that they provide uh, goods and services of adequate level of uh, quality to meet the expectation. And if the, the, the Consumer Protection Act um, is designed to ensure that products are safe for individuals, 
And if anyone has the right to claim, if anything's been breached, then they're allowed to claim under the consumer protection laws that are in place for them. So the next one we're looking at is to describe uh, the features of uh, contract law, why contract law is so important in regards to businesses, why there's a need for contract law in place. So contract law is really important as business owners. You have, you have, uh, you will, you know, have contracts in place between you or two or all the parties, and they must be legally binding contracts and provide remedies for the contracts if they fail to comply with them. Uh, for a contract to legally enforceable, it must meet a certain amount of criteria, and we'll go through each of the criteria so you have a better idea of what they have to meet. So the first one is offer. In regards to an offer, um, so offer and acceptance. So offer and acceptance are the cornerstones of any contractual relationship since it initiates the formation of a contract. One party must make an offer to another party. Essentially, an offer is a promise to do business with the other party, provided they accept their role, their offer, sorry. Additionally, offers needs to contain the base level terms of a contract. The person making the offer must also have an intention to be legally bound by the agreement should the other party accept the offer. The next step requires one party to accept the offer they receive. When the offer is accepted, the contract may become enforceable and you can consider the acceptance requirement as the assent to, to the pro proposed offer. So a party can accept an offer in writing, verbally, or even through your conduct. Acceptance can signal the intention for the contract to bind you. For example, without verbally accepting an order, a, a supplier can deliver goods to another pet party and request payment. The performance of those functions signifies that they have accepted the original order and are intended to be bound by that contract. So it's really important that you make that into uh, an example in regards to it. And these two elements are the cornerstone of any contract. The next one is um, consideration. So consideration is the third step to create an illegally enforceable contract. Uh, this requires to pay or transfer something of value in exchange for um, exchange for a service. Consideration does not need to be money. It can be anything of the value, including goods, services, or promises to provide these things. For example, a hotel might offer a room to a customer who pays for their stay by working and working and making up other rooms in the hotel. In that instance, consideration in the contract would be the customer's work around the hotel. Then we have intent. So intention to create legal relationships is a vitally important component of creating a legally binding contract. Indeed, you cannot have a legally binding enforceable contract if both parties do not show their intention uh, for the agreement to bind them. It can be difficult to prove intention to create legal relationships. One, one common method of demonstrating this mutual intention is using a heads of agreement, also known as a term sheet. This outlines the key terms and the contractual relationship between the parties before the main contractual documents are signed. Generally, a contract only binding when all parties to the agreement sign. However, in some cases, you can still enforce an unsigned written contract. In such scenarios, if a party shows that they intend for the agreement to bind them, the contract can be legally binding and enforceable. For example, consider a supplier who does not sign a contract but still performs their contractual obligations by delivering an assignment of goods. In that case, their conduct will be likely to demonstrate their intention for the contract to bind them. So for, for a contract to be legally binding, you must have an offer, acceptance, intention, and obviously you must have a consideration in place from both parties. So a summary table just there to help you uh, um, recap on what we've just done for that part of it. 
Uh, so we've looked at an offer, which is a proposal to enter into contract on specific teams. Terms, the importance of the offer forms the foundation of the contract. We've looked at an example, a business offers to sell a product for £100. Looked at acceptance, another important element of contract law, unconditional agreement to the terms of the offer. We've looked at the importance of that. And we've looked at uh, the accept and finalizes the agreement and creates a binding contract. And an example, a customer accepts the offer to buy the product. We've looked at consideration in regards to the value exchange between the parties, ensures the contract enforceable by law. And then the customer pays £100 and the business provides the product. And then finally, intent, which is the intention to create legal binding contract establishes uh, the contract has legally consequences and a business and a customer intend to make a contract. So in conclusion, the key features of contract law offer acceptance consideration are essential features of creating a legally binding contract. Each element ensures there's a mutual agreement between the parties backed by the exchange of value with the understanding that agreement is enforceable by law. By meeting these requirements, businesses and individuals can enter into contracts and um, these are legally enforceable. So now we're looking at uh, describing describe the key features of tort law. Uh, in regards to businesses, which we'll be looking at the elements of tort law, why they're so important law. The law of tort is um, really important because it looks at the element of civil law that deals with situations uh, where one party's wrongful actions cause harm to another party. Key features of tort law. So we've got the first one, which is possession of rights. So the first one is possession of rights in regards to tort law. And that in tort law, individuals, businesses have certain legal rights, such as the right to personal safety, property ownership, privacy, and freedom from defamation. The importance of possession of rights are that they are recognised by the law and tort law that individuals and business seek uh, legal recourse if the rights are infringed. Example of that is a person has the right to enjoy their property without any sort of interference. Then we have violation of rights. Um, a tort occurs when one party violates the legal rights of another, even through intentional actions or negligence. The importance of this, that violation rights is the core element of tort law. Uh, the wrongdoer, you know, um, in regards to that, uh, is violated the rights and um, it's an act or omission that is intentional or accidental um, for, or, you know, um, and it's important in regards to it, you know, because the, the damages are awarded in regards to that. Then we've got the element of injury. So within tort law, injury um, refers to harm any sort of harm that has been caused in regards to uh, the plaintiff, which is the person being in the action. Uh, this injury can be physical, emotional, or financial, or reputational. The importance of this, that injury or loss must be proven for a successful tort claim, uh, and the party would be compensated. And an example of this, that if a person slips at works uh, and failure to clean up that sp spill resulting in physical um, injuries uh, is the basis of a claim for tort. We have uh, types of torts, so negligence resulting in, uh, for example, you know, if a, um, a doctor doesn't, uh, you know, um, take reasonable care because he has a duty care to the, the patient and there's an error or he leaves something in their body within an operation, this is an element that would be taken into account and there would be a medical claim there. Intentional torts, so assault, defamation, uh, trespass, if uh, neighbours trespass or anything, and then strict liability imposed without inherent, so on animals, any sort of hazardous industries. Mm. 
there's a summary table there in regard to the law of tort, which we looked at the possession of rights. We looked at violation of rights within tort law and the injury and gave you examples around that. So in conclusion, the law of tort is essential for protecting individuals and businesses from wrongful acts that can cause any sort of harm or any sort of violation of anyone's right or any sort of injury to them. It is violated someone's right and someone can be injured and there is form of compensation available for them and it is um, it could turn into um, a, 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 some sort of injury for the party. So there is a form of compensation available for them. So 3.4 describe the key features of international law. So international business law is an essential part of growing globally uh, nations and the integration of national economies into global um, system, otherwise known as globalization. And there's loads of elements of that within any business. It's designed for maintaining any sort of peace and ensuring fair treatment of nations around it. And it's different, you know, international business law uh, comprises of various legal aspects of conducting business across the borders, including business tra transactions, entity formation, and funding intellectual property. Um, and they're there to regulate the business operation and make sure that everyone is uh, meeting the requirements, following the legislation, and not um, exploiting uh, the economy. So key features of international law. So we've got international economic law, which is um, encompasses rules and principles governing economic uh, relations between the different trades. Uh, it includes things like trade law, investment law, and financial regulations. The key components we've got the trade uh, law, which regulates at the, which is through um, agreements such as the World Trade Organization, which is a WTO. Sorry, just sorry. It's the World Trade Organization. Investment law governs by uh, bilateral um, tri bilateral um, investment treaties and then financial regulations by the uh, World Bank and the International Financial um, Fund. The importance of this, that it um, promotes any sort of liberalization. Um, it promotes a relationship between the businesses um, to make sure that they all follow the requirements and make sure that the, there's a growth within the economy. The next one is international security law. And this is really important because it's an element of you know, protecting the businesses um, and why there's a need to have international protection laws within it. It's there to protect businesses, ensure that any sort of, uh, you know, if there's, you know, why there's a need for the requirements. So, you know, there is a need to make sure that there's, you know, secure uh, security in place when trading, there's security in place when, um, uh, you know, within the agreements and any sort of peacemaking securities in place as well, treaties to follow, uh, and it's critical for preventing any sort of armed conflicts, uh, managing any sort of crisis and promoting any global stability. So the example we've given in there is the United Nation peacemaking operations, uh, which deploy forces to conflict zones to help maintain any sort of peace and security, uh, such as Cyprus or South Sudan. Uh, the next one we're looking at is international um, criminal law. And that is really important when it comes to elements of trade as well, and make sure that there's no forms of, you know, international criminal law, and there's no forms of um, money laundering or any sort of elements of, you know, um, complying. So a company is treated um, is treated in law as a legal person, so it's capable of any committing any sort of offence. So, you know, it's important to comply. Um, and the ICC, which is the International Criminal Court, um, prosecutes individuals, uh, not groups or states, any individual who is alleged to have committed crimes um, within the jurisdiction of the um, International Criminal Court um, may be brought against before the ICC to identify if there's any elements of wrongdoing, you know. So it's a really important part of um, the, you know, uh, the crimes that are committed internationally. So the ICC is um, is important in regards to trying to, you know, uh, it's a court established to investigate 
uh, prosecute and try uh, individuals ab accused of committing the most serious crimes concerned to in international community as a whole um, and any crimes, namely the crime of genocide. It could be crimes on humanity, war crimes, and the crimes of aggression. So these could be any elements of it. Ad hoc tribunals, so international tribunals, such as International Criminal Tribunal for the uh, former Yugoslavia, um, have been set up to address specific issues of atrocities. Importance, international criminal law ensures that individuals uh, who commit serious crimes are held accountable, you know, not just get away with everything. So it's really important. And the example given was that the prosecution of individuals like Slob and Milosva of ICTI for war crimes committed during the Balkans. Now, the table that summary of the table for key features of uh, international laws. We looked at elements of international economic law. It governs uh, economic relations between nations and organizations. Key components is trade law, investment law, financial regulations. Importance promotes global trade, economic growth, and stability. An example is NAFTA, uh, USMCA, regulating trade between the US, Canada, and Mexico. Then we looked at international security law, which regulates actions to maintain global peace and security. Uh, the key components is use of force, disarmament, peacemaking. The importance prevents conflicts and promotes global stability. And the UN peacemaking operations in conflict laws. Then we looked at international crime, criminal law, prosecutes individuals for any serious international crimes. And it's ICC, which is the criminal court that deals with it. It shows that people are accountable for everything that they do. So have a look at that uh, summary of key uh, features table. So in conclusion, international law is vital tool for promoting cooperation, security and justice on a global scale. International um, economic law fosters economic growth and stability. International security law prevents conflicts and maintains peace and international uh, law holds individuals accountable for the most serious uh, violations of international norms. Uh, together with these branches of law, help create a more regulated and peaceful international community. So now we've finished learning out from three. Um, to just uh, So the next learning outcome is learning outcome four, and then we've got the assignment discussion. But I'll just give you a summary of what we've done in, in today's session. So we've looked at elements of um, in learning outcome three on consumer law, contract law, law of talk. We've looked at understanding key business-related laws. Um, again, looking at company law, consumer law, intellectual property, health and safety laws, and why they're important for businesses. Um, we looked at competition law, uh, environmental law. We also looked at uh, the elements of uh, key features of consumer law, things as like health and safety, fit for purpose, satisfactory quality. We also looked at elements of uh, key features of contract law. So we looked at importance of an offer, acceptance, uh, consideration and intention with reference to examples as well. So we gave you examples of each one in regards to the elements. We also looked at the key features of tort law and we looked at the um, possession of rights and uh, the violation of rights. And we looked at injury. We also looked at the different types of uh, Tort, such as negligence, intentional tort, and strict liability. We then went on finally to look at, in learning outcome three, um, at the features of international laws. And we looked at elements of um, international economic law, why there's important and key components of that, such as trade law, investment law, financial regulations, and looked at the importance and gave examples of the North American Free Trade uh, Agreement, NAFTA, uh, and also we looked at international security law and the key components of that, such as the use of force, disarmament and peacemaking. We also looked at uh, the international criminal law and looked at the, the, the work who's criminally accountable and looked at the work of international criminal court, which is ICC, and then looked at the importance of that as well. So that's just a, a, a summary of what we've done in today's session, learning out from three. Um, the, References for today's session are just listed here. So if you want to have a look at them, uh, there's some links there that you can read up uh, for further reading that you could go on to. Tech will help you 
in regards to Employment Rights Act 1996, the Equality Act 2010, and the International Chamber of Commerce. So there are links to them. You could read around that. Uh, please refer to any e-books, any journals on Moodle for any sort of additional reading. Uh, further reading, please have a look at the references, them links, they will really help you in regards to looking at the different elements of employment law, consumer protection law, elements of competition law, environmental law, how they affect businesses and why there's a need for them. So and why there's a need to have legislation within a business, uh, setting up a business. So any queries you have, uh, email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. Submission of the assignment to be done on learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. And the submission is after two weeks of the completion of the units and its delivery. So we've completed learning outcome three now. Uh, we've done one, two, and three, and all recordings are available on Moodle for you. The next learning outcome we'll be doing is learning outcome um, four. Um, and that, again, will also be on um, Moodle for you to refer to. Um, and um, all the recordings that are on Moodle, please, and if any questions, please refer to uh, learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk and go on to Moodle. So the next learning outcome I will see is learning outcome four, and then after that we have the assignment discussion. Thank you for attending today's session, and I will see you in the next session. Thank you.